I think when I first was attracted to the teaching side of medicine, it, there were several reasons for it. Um, one was that as a student, I admired greatly the people who were good at teaching. Uh, part of that was they were obviously impacting my life as a student. Part of it was they tended to be people that I recognized as practicing a lot of the things that make a great physician in their own personal life. Their, their generosity with their time, um, their willingness to develop others and help others was evident in their professional relationships, not just in their patient relationships. And I think that the role modeling of that uh, drew me in. Uh, another thing was that, and this is kind of selfish, but I found that the more I tried to teach as I learned enough to share with someone else, the better I retained what I was trying to learn. And it became a very reinforcing thing. Um, and, and then finally, you know, as you get on and you finish medical school and you take your Hippocratic Oath, that's actually part of the oath you take, is that you'll pass on these skills and, and this profession that you've been given to the next generation. I found working with students and residents was one that was especially appealing because I remembered that world. I'd learned what was hard for me as I went through those years and being able to, to take that knowledge and do something for them in their development years meant a lot. I think having students and residents around you as you're practicing, whether it's in the clinic or the operating room, uh, adds a layer of accountability to what you do. There's another set of eyes watching. As they get more senior, they have enough knowledge and experience to really make their own judgments about the quality of what's happening and contribute to it. When they're more junior, you're conscious, uh, sort of like when your kids are small, uh, you, when they're watching you, you're very conscious that you're saying a lot without saying much sometimes, and that they are role modeling or deciding what they won't role model after based on the behaviors you exhibit. So I think it affects how you uh, think of yourself, how you think about what you're doing in a way that yeah, it make, you're conscious of a higher level of accountability. When I was a student, uh, there was a gray-haired or no-haired person, the, the professor, and they always were the seat of ultimate knowledge. You know, they, they knew the most, they had been around the most, and we looked to them with the tough questions. And nowadays, the third-year student uh, that may be seen as the youngest, most peripheral member of the team as you're around, can be on Google while somebody's pontificating and come up with more current information than the professor often has. So it's really changed the game in a good way. I think it, it's made it more of a team sport. It's leveled the playing field about learning, and I think it's humbled a lot of us older people uh, and helped us stay fresh in, uh, in learning new things. So I think it's, it's good, but it's been a challenge. The, the, uh, the wonder of students learning, I, I, I always find that exciting. So if I'm in the OR and a resident who's been struggling with the task does it really well, that's just an inspiring moment to see them do that. It's like when your kid gets on the bike and you let go and they ride, you know, it's just exciting. And they work very hard at it. So for to see the reward they experience when they feel like, yeah, I, I know how to do that now. Same thing with a medical student. You'll be sitting in a room and you'll ask a question and you'll see them coming up with the answers and realizing how much they have learned, even though they feel like they, they, they have so much they don't know. Uh, that's exciting.